Hey, welcome to UB Chef. Um, as usual, I'm going to be taking you through uh, this week's recipes. Uh, so, UB Chef, if you've not had it before, um, it's us here at the restaurant, me and my team, uh, making up a fantastic menu for you every week. We have three starters, three mains, two desserts and cheese, uh, and we have our weekly bake as well. Uh, and then it comes to you all ready to go. Uh, you just have to like maybe dress a little vegetables in a vinaigrette or add a little vinaigrette to the starter. Very, very simple things, uh, but you end up with a restaurant dish in your own home. It's loads and loads of fun. Uh, we have a massive spectrum of guests ordering every week uh, from people who never cook at all to people who love cooking, and it's been well, really well received. Um, so uh, if you haven't tried it yet, give it a go. You chef, all the details are on the website. There's always menus ahead, um, so usually three to four menus ahead on the website, so you can plan if you've got a like, little dinner or sort of get together. And obviously that's a bit limiting at the moment, but, but certainly in the future, uh, this is going to be carrying on. Um, we're loving it. It's, it's a great opportunity uh, where you know, we can really put our passion uh, into the cooking still. Uh, the only difference is people aren't coming to the restaurant and it's, it's going by a box. So, so really, really loving this, this stage now. Um, I'm going to take you through recipes. Uh, we're going to get cooking. Uh, and as usual, I'll take you step by step through. You get your recipe book, Huber Chef recipe book here, which has got all the details, it's got all the label information, uh, so it really is like um, very finely detailed. Um, it says like whether it's to be stored in the fridge, how many it serves, um, and then each um, little recipe has got a mise en place list, as we would do in the, in the kitchen when we're in the restaurant serving customers. You have all your, di all your sort of items set out, uh, and then it's all numbered the way you put the dishes together. So simple as, great fun. Uh, give it a go and let's get cooking. My weekly bait this week um, is this lovely seaweed for gas. Uh, so beautiful uh, sourdough based dough uh, with lovely selection of seaweed just on the top. And then we're sending it with a little bit different this, uh, yuzu and uh, seaweed butter. So yuzu has got a lovely sea, uh, sort of citrusy flavour. Um, make sure you take this out 15 minutes before you're going to serve it so it can soften up. I've got a little pot here that I'm going to use a pan knife and just press that into. And then you're for gas. Uh, I want to put a little bit of oil on mine, it's optional, you don't have to do that. But a little bit of oil, and then I'm going in the oven for about five minutes on there. Not too long at all. There we go. So we'll wait for that to just heat through. I'm going to put my butter into the dish, and we'll be right back, and I'll show you this how it looks on the plate. Okay, so just grabbing out my gas now. There we go. Mine that tray hot and then a little bit of sea salt just on the top I use molten salt it's the one I prefer so a bit of seasoning a touch more oil on there gives it another really nice little shine as well and then that butter which I just pressed in there you can see all the flecks of it if you can't see in there which is beautiful and then there's my for gas all ready to take to the table share and dunk into that lovely butter First start of you here, uh, lovely little fish cakes. Um, in here we've got brill, we've got a bit of salmon, we've got loads of loads going on in here. Uh, fine bre uh, panko breadcrumb around the outside, and I've got lime zest, lemon zest in there, so lovely and citrusy. Plenty of herbs, dill, tarragon, chives. Then we've got uh, baby cucumber that we're serving with it. So uh, fish cakes are going to go in for about eight to ten minutes, first of all. There you go. And then grab yourself a mixing bowl, and then you want to get your cucumber. Give that a little drain. You see, this is lovely little baby cucumber pieces we've got here. They are just lightly pickled. And then what I'm going to do um, is take some of my red pepper dressing. So in here we've done like a roasted red pepper oil uh, with some lovely smoked pimento going through there. And then we've uh, sort of confit the peppers, um, a little bit of seasoning. So I'm going to put a touch on there. And that's just to kind of start dressing that cucumber to give that lovely little mix around and then that can be all sat there ready to go for when we come to serve it and then you've got more dressing which we'll serve with and then this is your pill pill sauce uh, we make this with um, basically the belly from cod um, we cover that in uh, a sort of a light olive oil touch of chili um, lemon in there plenty of garlic we bring it up to heat and um, then we sort of cook it slightly uh, we let it sit, we separate out the oil from the cod juice, which it sort of comes out of it, and then we blitz them both back together. 
um, separately and you end up with this lovely, almost like a cod mayonnaise. Uh, so it's pill pill Spanish, um, delicious. So that's gonna wait on there, room temperature. So all, when, uh, all ready for when our fish cakes come out. All right, fish cakes have been in about eight to 10 minutes now. There we go, they're all nice and hot. A little bit of modern salt just on the top, I prefer. There we go, right. So remember our cucumber that we dressed. That's all sitting there with a little bit of that red pepper uh, dressing. Then what we're gonna do is take some of your pill pill sauce, give it a little stir. Sometimes it can sort of set up slightly in the tub. So then a really nice bit of that pill pill sauce on your plate. First of all, use the back of a spoon. And just spread that out, turn the bowl. You want a nice base of the sauce. And then we're gonna put our cucumber on. So a little bit more spread now. There we go. Okay, so that's all that. Then I'm gonna take some of my cucumber I'm just gonna sort of fold it over nicely as you go round. It's a lovely, vibrant green colour against that completely ultra white sauce pill pill. So, a little bit there. And I'm gonna take some of that red pepper now, and I'm gonna put some of that just on the base so it's all striking off against that green. Right, then the fish cakes. So, obviously UV Chef is generous, to say the least, so you've got three lovely fish cakes in there. Like so, here we go. Now I'm gonna take another bit of cucumber on the top. Right, they'll tie you down, there's those, then Take some of your red pepper, drain it off a little bit from the dressing, and we want to touch on the top. This is again so you see that lovely red vibrant colours and the green when it gets to the table. Simple, simple, but you can do a lot just with those few items. So there we go. And then lastly, a little bit of a dressing. Right, so that is a full flavour, uh, little fish cakes with pickled cucumber and a roasted red pepper dressing. Next start this week, um, we've got a lovely shoe crew, um, and in there we've got uh, like a spiced duck breast, uh, which we've cured and then sliced very, very thinly. Um, and we've got a little cigarette of duck confit just going in here, so that's five minutes in the oven. It's in this uh, foil brick pastry, um, like three loaf, but you get lovely and crisp as you heat it back up. Shoe crew. Uh, which has got uh, some duck fat going through there. Um, it's got white wine vinegar, so it's quite a real uh, lovely taste of it. That's going to go on the stove, just bring that back to temperature. Uh, and then we've got some crispy Cavallo Nero to serve with it. Um, we've got a little mustard gel as well. You can spoon that on or put it in a little piping bag. So in readiness for your duck cigarette coming out, just get a knife and carefully cut open your uh, little duck compaccio. Make sure this sits out, comes up to room temperature before you serve it. Doesn't taste very nice for it to cold. So all of that is ready. My shoe crew is warming up. I'll be back in about five minutes to put this dish together. Okay, so we've just got a little uh, plate warming up there. Ready for my shoe crew. So you can see that's all steaming away there. And it will come uh, sort of in a container with a uh, little bit of juice in there. And that's aimed so you can heat the cabbage up without drying it out, but you don't want to put all of that juice onto the plate for this. You can if you, if you like, but it will make it a little bit soupy. So what I like to do to serve this is just take some of that shoe crew, first of all. And this is hot, this is now. So uh, the idea is that this is going to heat the duck up when we put the duck on the top. The duck, of course, is cooked. Don't worry, don't worry about it not being cooked. It's, it's lovely and pink because it's been cured. So, two fruit on like, like so. And then what I'd like to do is either get a palette knife, or like I'm doing, just a nice long knife, and sit your duck, look at that, beautiful. Sit your duck on top. And let's get our duck cigarettes out. Just check, that's, yep, yeah, nice and crisp. And then get your mustard gel. I put mine into a little piping bag. 
You don't have to, you can just spoon it on. But I'm gonna just put some lovely little mounds of that gel on the top of a duck. There we go, like so. And I'm gonna take my uh, duck cigarette. That's gonna sit on top. And then some of that nice crispy Cavalo Nero. Just a few pieces. Just play with the colors again. This is a really like lovely wintry dish. Shukru, real favorite of mine. Taught to me by uh, Jermaine Schwab um, up at Wintry and Fields back in the day. But there you go. So a little Shukru, spiced up breast, uh, comfy duck cigarette, mustard gel, and that's made with uh, pomery mustard and crispy Cavallo Nero. This is a chestnut mushroom bavoir. Uh, so in here we've got like a, sort of like a puree of chestnut mushrooms which we've sautéed, uh, some lovely colour, like caramelised. Uh, and then we've set that lightly in the bottom. It's got soy jelly on the top. Uh, I'm going to serve it with this pumpernickel bread. Um, I'm going to warm it up. So just a couple of minutes in the oven whilst we go through the rest. Um, just to finish this off, we've got pickled mushrooms. Really, really simple. Um, selection of wild mushrooms in here. So you've got some girol, got some Tropic de L'Amour, um, there's a little Pierre de Mouton in there as well. So just basically play with those colours, nicely put those around. And these are quite, when they've been pickled, they've got that, that lovely vinegariness to, uh, to them which will cut through the richness of the barbara underneath. So just take a little bit of time arranging those. And then I've, after I've got some deep fried celery leaf which we're going to put on the top. So once you've arranged them, you're happy with looks all nice. Those trumpets are really lovely. Lovely black colour, just uh, like a little woodland floor. So there we go. And then celery leaves, which had a lovely little uh, sort of crispness just to the top. I'm just going to take a few of them and just finish it off like so. If your celery leaves have gone a little bit softer during the transit, just flashing through the oven very, very quickly, and they'll soon crisp back up again. So, there we go. I'm very happy with that. I'm gonna put that on my serving plate. And then let's grab our pump right now. And again, if you prefer, you can take it out of these dishes, but um, I quite like them where, you know, less washing up. They're all sustainable as well. So take our lovely little pumpernickel just on the side already to dip in a beautiful starter. Hope you enjoy it. This is a fillet of hake uh, that we're going to be cooking next. Um, it's already been part grilled, so all you've got to do is put that together with the polenta um, into the oven for about 8 to 10 minutes. So there you go. And then what we're going to be serving with, Provencal vegetables. So in here we've got some roasted red onion, uh, you've got aubergine, peppers, uh, courgette, and some confit garlic in there as well. Uh, so this is again going to go in the oven. Uh, it's only going to take about five, six minutes to heat up. Um, and then also we've got some black olive tapenade, which I'd suggest just serving at room temperature. Uh, this is a mixture of black olives. Uh, you've got some capers in there, parsley, shallots. Um, so this is just going to be room temperature. I'm going to leave it on the side and then um, get my vegetables into the oven once the polenta and the fish has been in for a few minutes or so. So plates all ready for my hake and garnish vegetables. So let's get them out now. They've been in about eight, 10 minutes. So there's my hake, polenta, nice and delicate that is. Now we're going to heat it up, so just be careful with that one. And then all of my vegetables. So it's really easy again to put these dishes together. So let's get fish slice first of all, and take your polenta. So watch that, let's get that on the plate. And then what we'll do, we'll get our vegetables and I'm gonna start kind of, just sort of building them up. A little bit sitting on top of the, um, of the polenta. 
We've got a lovely red onion roasted. A little bit of aubergine which I'll sit the fish on. And then again, as always, just play with those colours. You've got some lovely little coffee garlic cloves in there, which have just been cooked at low temperature, just so you can almost just suck that garlic out of the inside, which will wear me nice and uh, nice and sweet. So again, a few more garlic cloves. All spread between a bit more yellow courgettes. So you got a real mixture in here. There we go. Like so. And then also some of the oil, which is just in those vegetables. This will be lovely and flavoured by all of that garlic. So a touch of that onto the plate. And then next, get your fish slice again. Go in about hake. Hake's quite delicate. Just be careful with that one. Nice piece of hake on that. I'm just going to throw those away. And then I've got my black olive tapenade to finish. So I'm just going to take a spoon of that, like so. And then take another identical spoon and just sort of spin that between both the spoons, okay? Just do it a number of times. Don't rush it. Just until you end up with a nice canal. Now I'm going to sit that very carefully on top of my fish. So there you have a lovely hake Provencal, Parmesan polenta, little comfy garlic, and I have comfy garlic on there, and black olive tapenade. Perfect now for um, these cold wintry days. Uh, I've got this short rib of beef, uh, which we've slow cooked. Um, we've cooked it in black treacle and thyme. Um, so really, really lovely flavour. Comes to you all ready to go in the oven for about 20, 25 minutes. So in that goes. And then the garnish, I'm doing like a classic bourguignon garnish with this. Um, so you, in here you've got your uh, button mushrooms, so use chestnut mushrooms, baby onions, and little lardons um, of smoked bacon. Um, and then you've got a little braised and uh, roasted carrot. They're gonna go in the oven for about eight minutes or so. So once your beef has been in a little while, they're gonna go in. And then just classic garnish, just truffle mashed potato. What more would you, would you want with it? Uh, truffle mash, which comes with a lovely bit of nutmeg grated on the top. And then we've got our red wine sauce, which is again has got some um, black treacle going through there on time. So these are going to go on the heat. Right, I'll just start warming them up once my beef has been in for about 15, 15 or so minutes. Uh, and then we'll have our garnish in and we'll be all ready to plate it up. Okay, so I'm just getting my plate warming up. For my beef there, always hot plates important. I put my mash into a python bag, you don't have to do that, you can spoon it on, up to you. And then there's my red wine sauce all ready to go with that touch of black treacle in there. Let's go to the oven, grab out your lovely beef rib, pour the yon garnish there. And then lastly, our roasted carrot. So, Best thing I think to do first is to put your rib of beef on. Now, be careful with this, obviously it's really, really delicate. It's also sort of nice and sticky, so just lift that out of the container first. Just onto your board. Check which way you want to have it sitting. So I'm going to have it presentation side towards me like that. There we go, beautiful. And then, what we're going to do, take my mash, Cut off that end, keep that just out of the way, and then I'm going to pipe my mash on like so. There we go. And then let's take uh, let's take the carrots. So I've got my braised carrot just to sit on, and then bourguignon garnish. I'm just going to kind of like start scattering out like a, like a round and then it will just leave a sauce to go on last. So again, real Moorish dish for this time of year. Get your sauce and just nappe that over the top of that beef. That will give it a lovely glaze. More sauce taken to the table, touch around. There we go, beautiful braised short rib of beef, treacle and thyme, a uh, little roasted carrot, bourguignon garnish, and truffle mashed potato. Hope you enjoy this one.
And for my vegetarian main course, um, I've got a tart fire Drew Smart choke, lovely little Drew Smart choke puree that goes on the top. That's going to go in the oven for about 20 minutes uh, just to warm up, or just until the pastry is crisp around the edge. Um, and then what we're going to serve it with a uh, little uh, selection of winter vegetables. So in here I've got some beetroots, uh, which have been salt baked. Uh, we've got some cavolo, we've got some spinach, uh, we've got some carrots in there as well. Um, that's going to go in the oven about eight to ten minutes just to heat up, no longer. Um, I'll show the puree to go with and a lovely sherry vinaigrette, which we're going to dress over the vegetables uh, just when they come out of the oven. So once our tart's been in, sort of ten or so, get your vegetables in. The puree that wants to be gently warming on the stove, about two three minutes to go, and the vinaigrette just room temperature. Um, Otherwise, if you heat that up, it goes very, very thin. It's almost like very greasy over, over the veg then. So uh, we'll be back uh, shortly to plate this one up. So plate down, all ready for the uh, tart to go on. A puree, all ready to go. Then let's grab our vegetables out first of all. And our tart fine. So the way I plate this one, is uh, get some of your puree first of all. I'm just going to put a little bit of that actually on the base of the plate. That's just to start uh, sort of help the tart from moving about. So I'm just going to go on. Let's get our fish slice. And then let's carefully get our tart on that goes. And nice and quick will work then to get our vegetables on. So take some of your vinaigrette cherry vinaigrette, give it a good stir, and then over the top of the vegetables, give them a nice little stir, and then start plating those all around the outside. So I've got some uh, little candy beetroots there, we've got golden beetroot, then there's some lovely little cavolo which we've just wilted down. So I'm just uh, Making sure that's all nice and nice and even all the way around. I've got some uh, little salt baked carrots on there. There we go. And here you're just playing with all those colours, making it look really attractive. Now I'm going to finish it off with a little bit more puree in a second. And a touch more of that sherry vinaigrette. So. All happy with that, there we go. And then let's go back to our puree. Let's add a little bit about just around the edge. And then lastly, touch more of our sherry. Like so. So lovely tart fine of Jerusalem half choke winter vegetables and a warm sherry vinaigrette on the top. On to desserts now. Uh, first one being a, a treacle tart. Uh, so we've got a sweet pastry base, a uh, lovely treacle tart filling. That's going to go in the oven for about two to three minutes. You can serve it with a temperature if you like. I just like to warm mine up a little bit. Um, and then we've got my plate here. Uh, garnishes, uh, we've got a little salad of um, pink grapefruit segments um, with some comfy uh, pink grapefruit sort of uh, peel in there as well. So you peel it off, blanch it three times separately, and uh, boiling water and then you can slowly cook it in a, in a stock syrup um, which makes it lovely and tender so what I'm going to do take some of my pink grapefruit segments I'm just going to arrange them the reason for pink grapefruit in this very very sweet uh, tart so something like uh, citrus fruit is ideal to, to cut through that so take some of your segments and then your confit and just plate that Nice and attractively around the plate. And then the next thing is we've got a natural yogurt mousse. Again, natural yogurt because of the acidity to go well with the sweet tart. So dip your spoon in a little bit of hot water and then just give your mousse a little bit of a stir. And when you've got it all nice and together, and I'm just going to take a nice spoon of that and add it onto my plate. So 
There we go. Turn it around. Like so. And then all that's left is to build a bit of pink grapefruit crisp on there, which again, nice bit of bitterness. Out it comes. And then using the fish slice, nice little rearrange of that before it goes on. And there we go. And again, really, really nice for the kind of season. Warming, lovely citrus flavours, and that rich treacle tart. Hope you enjoyed this one. So you've been working hard up to this point. Um, been a little, a few things to do with some of the dishes, especially where we've got hot ones. This is now a completely cold dish. Um, so we've got vanilla panna cotta. So firstly, most important, let it uh, come to room temperature about 15 minutes at least before you're gonna serve it. And that way, just in that container, you can see you've got a serious wobble going on in there. So panna cotta is very, very lightly set. Um, shouldn't be like a bouncy ball. So um, let's put some of our uh, pear, first of all, this is just a poached pear done in some red wine. I'm going to put some of those pieces just going around like so. And then biscotti uh, just on the side, lovely crunchy biscotti to serve with it. And then next, I've got a little red wine caramel. This is with cardamom in here. So we've got cardamom flavour going through the biscotti, we've got cardamom going through the caramel. And just a tiny bit of that, not too much, just over the pears. Nice little contrast in colour. And then next, just to finish off, grappa. Grappa, absolutely beautiful with that panna cotta. And just a touch, you don't need much, it's really, really strong. So on that goes. And you're all ready to serve. So, lovely pan, uh, panna cotta um, with uh, poached pear and the uh, cardamom uh, biscotti just on the side. Hope you enjoy. Our cheese course uh, for this week. Uh, so, this week it's a cheese tasting plate. Um, we've got it with miso crackers. So, we've got some. Um, uh, lovely miso going through the dough on here. Um, basically, you need to make sure that your uh, cheeses are out of room temperature um, for serving. Very, really, really important. And then take them out of their little packet. And you'll see that we've sliced them. They're all in order for you in here as well. Um, got a little bendy fork just to put my, some of my crackers in. But then just arrange in order. So, so we're starting off with the goats. Remember, you've got your cheese tasting notes as well with this. So it's quite easy to sort of follow. And this is the order that we suggest. Uh, Petit Pont de Vette there, lovely favourite. And then finishing off with that Isle of Wight blue and you can see it's just like oozing. Really perfectly aged that one, lovely. And then a bit of quince jelly, we served it with this week, just on the side. And we've got those tasty notes to go with it. So just nice to take it to the table with those notes and then you could have a read through as you're eating it. And look at that, lovely miso cracker. Just built there. So, that's your Yubi Chef tasting cheese board this week. Um, all served up with quince jelly and miso crackers. So that's the end of uh, another Yubi Chef week. Uh, all the recipes done, all the food cooked up, packed. Uh, and sent out all ready to be uh, arriving with the guests over the weekend. Um, and look at next week's menu. Uh, so we've got low tap and we've got a native lobster, uh, an Armagnac bisque, we've got Carpaccio beef, which is back on. Um, we've got Ballantine of New Forest venison, um, with like a chicken fire sort of mousse around the outside of it. Uh, Black Forest Gatto uh, on dessert of 23 karat gold. Um, and then we've got our Rockfall cream with a Verju jelly set on the top, so loads, loads happening here. Remember, every week it's ordered by Sunday evening, um, and then it's for delivery the following Friday and Saturday. Uh, so yeah, you be chef in your home, put your feet up, you don't need to do any shopping, you don't need to do any chopping or peeling, uh, restaurant meal in your home, we'd love to send it to you.